it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Lawn Fawn's Year 11 and Out of This World. So I've stamped the images I'll be using on Spectrum Noir Ultra Smooth Premium White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. For my first combo today, I'm going with some aqua shades. I'm using BG11, BG13, and BG15. So I'm laying in some shadow with that BG15 on the left hand side since he's tipped back a little bit that way. And then blending that out with the BG13. And then pulling that forward even further with the BG11. I decided that I needed a fourth shade in there though because I wanted his um, right side to be even lighter. So I did pull in the BG10. And then I am going to do a second layer over that to smooth everything out. I felt like the blend wasn't as seamless as it could have been, and it also just increases that saturation and depth a bit. So I'm just going right over the shades that I've already laid in, just doing a quick second layer. Then I'm going to come over to the planet that looks like Earth, and I'm going to do the ocean part with these shades as well. This time I'm flipping the shadows to the right hand side and that's just based on where I know I want these images to go on the card because this one could be tipped in either direction. So any way you color it is going to be fine as long as you put a highlight on one side and a shadow on the other. But I like to do it based on where they end up on the card. The images that end up on the right side I usually shade on the right and the images on the left I usually shade on the left. Not always, but typically that's what I like to do. Then I'm going to switch it up to another aqua combo. This one is a bit darker, more of a turquoise. So I'm gonna use BG45 and BG49. I'm gonna do another one of these tiny planets or they could be large colorful stars, however you want to make them on your card. But I just decided to do like little tiny planets. So I colored that in and then I'm going to go up to one of these stripey planets and I'm gonna do every other stripe in this darker combo as well. So I put the BG49 on the right hand side and I'm blending toward the left with the BG45. And then I went back and added a bit more of that BG49 and just blended that out one more time. Then for the other stripes, I'm gonna go with the BG quadruple zero and then back to the BG10 and BG11. So I'm putting the BG11 on the right, blending out with the BG10 for the midtone, and then using that BG quadruple zero for the highlight. Then I wanted to go with some darker blues and I chose B24, B26, and B29. And I'm going to do this larger striped planet, putting that B29 on the left now and blending across with the B26 and saving some room on the right hand side for that lightest shade, the B24. And I will make sure to go over the edge of that B26 a bit with that B24 because there is a nice step down in shade right there. And of course I am going in with my second layer. I decided to leave it in the video for today. It really depends on the length of the video. I like to keep my videos not too much longer than 20 minutes or 30 minutes if it's super heavy coloring like a whole background and everything with Copics. So um, if there's room in it, I will leave in that second layer because I know it is helpful to see it sometimes, but I also don't like to bore you guys. So um, I just try to keep the, the length of the video not too long. So I did another one of those planets with the darker blue. And then for the lighter stripes, I'm gonna go with B41, B52, and B45. So I'm starting on the left with the B45, blending about another third over with the B52, and leaving that final third for the highlight shade, the B41. 
And this combo does blend pretty well, so it's I'm not going over it a second time because of the blend necessarily, but more because of that saturation and depth. I really like to have a lot of contrast in my coloring, and that second layer helps. I did skip the second layer of the lightest shade, the B41 on that planet, just to create a bit more contrast between the left and the right. And then I'm coming over and doing another one of these little planets with the rings around it, this time shading on the right hand side. And I did add that smiley face. I just wanted another planet with a smiley face to kind of go along with the one from year 11. So there are smiley faces in that stamp set that you can add or not. And that one just seemed like a good one to add it to because it has a nice big area for that little face right above the ring. Then I'm moving on to some greens and I'm going to use YG05, YG07, and YG09. And I'm going to color in the land masses on the planet that looks like Earth. So I started with the YG09. This time I'm shading where the curve is on the outside edge and keeping the highlight almost in the center of the planet as a whole just to help it look a bit more rounded. And then I'm also going to color in every other stripe on the party hat with this combo. Just using the YG09 down at the bottom, use the YG07 and then the YG05 just on the upper stripe because there wasn't room on the bottom stripe. And then I'm gonna do this last stripey planet with this combo as well. So I'm just doing every other stripe once again, shading with the shadows on the left and the highlight on the right. And I am going back in with that second layer once again. And then for the other stripes on that planet, I'm just gonna go down a little bit in that same family of colors and keep the YG05, which is now gonna become my shadow shade and then add in the YG01 and the YG03. So it'll just be um, a little bit of a contrast there, just like on the aqua striped planet and the blue striped planet. So on those stripes, I only added a second layer of the YG05 just to add a bit more contrast. And then I colored in the last tiny planet with that combo as well. I use the YG01 for the party horn, and then I'm moving on to some gray tones, and I'm using W00, W1, and W3 to do the ring around the year 11 planet, and also add some contrast to the white stripes on the party hat. I'm also going to do the ring around the other planet on the right, but I'm doing that with just the W3 for now because I'm gonna add more contrast to that. And then using all three shades for the moon and then just the W1 for a little shading on the stars so they'll look white. And then I'm gonna pull in the W5, like I said, to add more contrast to that ring around the planet and then also to do the little craters on the moon and I'm blending that out with the W3. Then I'll take a black Sakura jelly roll pen and go over the eyes of the two planets with the smiley faces and then I'm going to trim these images out with their matching dies. For my background, I'm taking a piece of Bristol Smooth Surface cardstock and I'm going to start blending on some Distress Oxides to create a galaxy background. The first shade that I'm using is Twisted Citron and I want there to be more bold color on this galaxy than what I've done in the past. So I'm doing some pretty big swaths of color. The next shade I'm adding is some Salvage Patina and just uh, blending that next to the Twisted Citron. The third shade is Peacock Feathers. So I'm kind of incorporating the same shades that I use to color in my planets. 
and that one I'm going in um, near the salvage patina and some of that is going near the twisted citron as well just making sure that the colors that I layer next to each other are going to blend nicely and then um, for the fourth shade for the background I'm using some blueprint sketch so just bringing that in to fill in any remaining little white spaces there so I have a pop of that bold blue color as well. And then I'll go back to the Twisted Citron and just make sure that the areas around that are blended nicely, adding a bit more color. And then I did also decide to try to add some hickory smoke, but this gray is so light that it didn't really show up very well. Um, this was to kind of pull in the color of the moon and the stars. So I did add a bit of it, but um, it, it didn't add a ton to the background. So I think you could just as easily leave it off. But I wanted to have each of those colors represented in that galaxy. So now I'm going to come in with my final shade, which is black soot. And I'm going to darken that up so that it looks like, you know, the space sky. The, not, I don't know if you call it the sky once it's in space. But anyway, you know what I mean. Um, I'm going to darken it up a lot more at the bottom. I actually want to leave a lot of that bold color at the top. Um, I don't want to cover up too much of it. I just want a bit of a different look today. So I'm putting that color on a lot more heavy handed at the bottom. And then I will bring up uh, that black soot on the sides and the top to kind of frame everything in and pull it all together. But I'm just being really soft with my pressure and making sure not to come in too far with that black soot. I just don't want to cover up too much of you know that beautiful background and if this is looking kind of strange just wait once we start adding the stars and everything it really will pull the whole thing together and make it look like a galaxy so just kind of softening some areas there and making it look a little bit hazy and then I'm going to start adding in the details to help this come together like I said so First, I'm just going to add some plain water. I'm squirting that onto an acrylic block, and then I'll pick that up with a thin paintbrush and splatter that all over the background. This is going to lift some of that Distress Oxide. I'm going to let the water soak into that cardstock for just a few seconds, and then I'll lift it up with a paper towel. Next, to add a bit of sparkle and shine into that background, I'm going to take some Lawn Fawn Liquid Stardust. I'm going to shake that up really well because it does kind of settle down to the bottom, so you really want to make sure that it's uh, well mixed before you use it. I'll squirt some of that onto my block and splatter that all over the background as well. And this is going to be a subtle detail that will really shine when you tip your card into the light. So um, it just is another layer of interest on this background. Then to really give the look of stars, I'm going to take some Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. You could also use Copic Opaque White or anything like that. Even a white acrylic paint or gouache watered down slightly. And I'm going to make that a bit more fluid and then tap that all over the background as well. So I get a variety of different size dots. So it really looks like, you know, stars that are near and far away. So I'm going to keep splattering that until I have a look that I am happy with. And then I'm going to set this panel aside to dry completely. In the meantime, I'm going to work on my sentiment and I'm going to be white heat embossing onto some black licorice cardstock from Lawn Fawn. So I'm going to first treat that using the Rabbit Hole Designs embossing powder tool, just brushing that all over the surface of that black licorice cardstock. And then I'm going to ink up my sentiment using some Versamark ink. It's just a clear, sticky ink that's going to grab a hold of that embossing powder once I pour that over top. So I'm just being very light with my pressure, but I did stamp it down twice to make sure that I had every letter stamped down nicely. And then I'm going to coat that with the white embossing powder, tap off any excess from the back, and then I'll bring my heat tool to that. I usually like to heat it up from the back first, 
and then I bring it toward the front. It kind of minimizes some of the warping because the paper bends back and forth and not just in one direction. And I'm gonna heat that up until that embossing powder is all melted. And then I'm also gonna create an insert for the inside of the card and I'm stamping on a piece of white cardstock using some Peacock ink from Lawn Fawn and doing Hope Your Birthday is Out of This World from both of those sets that I used at the beginning. And then I'm going to glue that to the inside of a black licorice card base. I did die cut that panel using the outside in stitch rectangle stackables. So I would have just a little bit of a frame around it with that black cardstock. And I did the same for this galaxy background as well. Um, just so I have that stitching detail and the bold black frame on the edges. Then I can bring in my images and I've added foam tape to the back of most of them. I think all of them but the stars. And I'm going to start adhering these down in um, kind of like a, a zigzag pattern almost. So I have the large blue striped planet and then uh, kind of zigzagging down I have the planet Earth. And then I have the year 11 planet with his party hat and party horn. And then down at the bottom right, I have another stripy planet. So I'm trying to spread those around. And then in between these, I'm gonna add my sentiment, which I've cut down into strips and added some foam tape to the back of those as well. So I'm doing, sorry, I missed your birthday. I didn't plan it that way, which is the sentiment that comes with the year 11 stamp set. So just trying to figure out the placement of those uh, main images plus the sentiment and then I can kind of adjust the other planets around it as needed. I did need to move the planet Earth just slightly so I just pulled that up and adjusted that and then I'm going to add the other uh, smiley face planet with the ring kind of right below that a little bit to the left. And then I have the moon, which needs to go near planet Earth, of course. So just figuring out the placement for that. And then I have another stripey planet. So I'm going to figure out where I want that one to go. And then I just have the three tiny solid planets. So I'm going to add those. And just make sure that the color that I place down is kind of... Um, away from the other planets that have that shade, if that makes sense. I like to spread the color around the scene and just, you know, draw your eye here and there. So then I have my five stars. So I'm just going to add the glue directly to the background and then just set the star in place over top. And um, I'm just going to keep filling in my scene with those. So. And I have to say that once this card is all filled in with those planets and stars, I really do love how those bolder bits of color in the background really are able to shine around those planets and just seem to make the sky glow. Uh, I'm really happy that I decided to leave a bit more of those colors showing in the background. So now I wanted to add a bit of sparkle. Even though this is a more masculine card, I think it works with the space theme. So I'm filling in those five stars completely. And then I'm also going to add it to the tiny planets, just adding it where the shadows are for those. I'm gonna add it to the rings around the two smiley face planets and also to the party hat. So I will lift that up to the camera so that you can see that sparkle from the stickles and hopefully a little bit from that liquid stardust in that background as well. You can kind of see it flashing in the light there. And then I'll give you another peek at the inside. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Ring that notification bell so you're always alerted when I post a new video, which is every Monday and Friday. All of the products that I use today will be listed and linked in the description bar below. And if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought you might also enjoy. You can click on either one to check them out. 
Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.